for attending. I'm Jennifer Link with Consultant Project Management. We are here for the second District 5 design presentation of projects that advertise between June 14th and August 16th for fiscal year 2022. I do want to talk about some information updates. We will be hosting a presentation for projects each quarter, so make sure you pay attention to the CAP plan for those, uh, those dates. Um, we also have changed the process to request marketing meetings. You can request one 30-minute meeting with the department designee and the grading TRC together. They are available on the CAP, so please make sure you look at the CAP plan to um, request a marketing meeting. Um, if you have any questions during this presentation, please submit them into the chat box. I will read them to the PMs as we go along and go through the projects. Um, as a reminder, always verify information and dates off of the CAP plan. And we will go ahead and get started. I would like to introduce Tyler Perget to begin. So I'll be presenting today State Route 46 resurfacing. That's 447103-1. That's the financial project number. Uh, this is State Route 46 east of Uppsala Road, County Road 15 to US 1792, French Ave. Next slide, please. So we're located in the city of Sanford in Seminole County, three miles in length. Uh, as you can see there, it starts uh, right after the 1792 intersection, so basically right after the Red Brick Road section of historic downtown Sanford, and then we go three miles west uh, till just before the Uppsala County Road 15 intersection. Uh, this is a resurfacing project, uh, began as a request from the maintenance office, but has become more uh, dynamic, you know, primarily due to the need for pedestrian multimodal and safety improvements. Uh, next slide, please. So we have design uh, scheduled to begin in November. That's coming November 2021 and $1 million programmed for design. Now the right away, uh, no right away acquisition for this one. There may be areas of tight right away, which the design firm will need to explore further and determine which approaches would be best to take. Construction as a letting of April 2024 and 5.9 million programmed for construction. Next slide, please. All right, so for the project scope, uh, we got the million resurfacing, uh, reconstruction of curb ramps for the ADA requirements, Multimodal improvements for pedestrian, transit users, etc. Construction of sidewalk and bicycle lanes. Uh, lighting analysis and retrofit at intersections. Analysis coordination for the landscaping that's impacted. And the on-street parking removal. Uh, that will be a uh, you know hot button item for this project. The on-street parking removal is uh, mostly tied to the bicycle facilities that will be added. Uh, I myself rode my bike to the bank one time. I live right in this area and I, I drove right through this area to get to the bank and I recognized that I was not gonna do that again because it's not very safe for cyclists at the time uh, currently. So this, this corridor will definitely benefit from uh, this sort of renovation. So I myself am looking forward to that. Um, transit users, uh, were mentioned, this is affecting current transit stops. So that's gonna need to be looked at and you know dealt with strategically. Uh, next slide, please. So we have, um, as far as public engagement plan, uh, this is going to be a uh, significant aspect of the project, the public engagement. Uh, of course, we're in the city of Sanford uh, the local agency will be dealing with primarily will be them. Uh, this was this project was designated as cap level three due to the number of businesses on this stretch of State Road 46, and of course also due to the removal of on-street parking for the bicycle facilities. Uh, 
a firm that's interested in this project will need to take a keen look at what needs to be included uh, to ensure the safest roadway possible. And uh, the firm would need to outline what public engagement actions would need to be taken. Uh, we, we do anticipate uh, a public meeting. Uh, of course, CFL Roads will be updating that throughout the life of the project to let the public uh, stay aware of what's going on. And uh, as you see here on the slide, Advent Health, we have Advent Health Center Care. We have two churches, uh, a variety of businesses beyond that. So that will be a significant aspect of the project. Next slide, please. So project advertisement is scheduled for June 14th of this year. Uh, the plan is to shortlist three firms and select one. The department designee is Jeff Cicerillo, and the TRC members will be Kathy Enot, Matthew Gallup, and Celine Bounds. Next slide, please. And that is it, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, of course, Tyler, all the, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Tyler, go ahead and say what you're gonna say. Yeah, I was just gonna say that, uh, of course, all of our backup documentation that was uh, developed and uh, used in the scoping of the project, that will all, of course, be added to the cap for access. Uh, so just all the documents that they used, all the, uh, any studies, any uh, for prior projects that were used in determining what the scope was necessary for this job. It will all be there accessible. Tyler, we have one question. Is this still a VD set aside project? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Is this still a BDI set aside project? I'm sorry, I don't have the, the answer to that. So I well, I'll, actually, I'll, I don't see that it's a, a BDI project. Um, this was never, I don't believe this one was listed as a BDI. Hmm. I'm sorry, I don't have that off the top of my head right now. Uh, we we could post the answer on the cap. Is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. All right. We I'm have. Sorry about that. We'll uh, we'll okay. get the answer to you. Well, it's not on my list as a BDI, so I would say it's not going. But um, I will have the okay. cap updated to reflect that. Um, there were okay, some questions you. regarding um the this presentation is being recorded. And it will be posted on the CAP plan, as well as any questions that we do not answer during the presentation. They will also be. Um, and the next question for you, Tyler, is, hold on. CF, CFL Road says this State Road 46 is a BDI. We will, we will get, look into that. I'm pretty sure this is not a BDI. Um, any signalization improvements, Tyler? Uh, not significant. Uh, that's my understanding of the scope. We are doing some pedestrian signals, uh, pedestrian signal work, and that will, uh, I believe the level of that would be determined by the design firm. Okay. All right. Um, all right. At right now, we'll just wait a minute or two for any other questions. All right, Tyler, I think you're good. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next we have Daniel Simpson. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daniel Simpson, and I'm the project manager for the 447-104-1 State Road 500 resurfacing from just north of State Road 50 to the State Road 414 ramps underpass, also known as Maitland Boulevard. Next slide, please. So this project is located in Northwest of downtown Orlando in Orange County. The, truck, the project begins just North of the intersection of State Road 50, where State Road 500 runs between the residential area of College Park and the Country Club of Orlando. The project construction ends just south of State Road 414 ramps and the overpass in the Lockhart community area. 
that contains just under six and a half miles of roadway resurfacing. The project is based off a of request from the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 maintenance offing, and the needs that have been identified during our scoping process. Next slide, please. So this resurfacing project is expected to follow a uh, standard 24 month schedule and receive notice to proceed uh, the end of this year. All of the proposed work is within the FDOT right away and we don't respect, expect any type of right away phase. As of today, the letting date is set for March, 2024. The project is currently funded with $1.8 million for design, zero for right away, and 10.5 million to construct. Next slide, please. So some of the highlights from this resurfacing project's full scope of work are the need to provide new span wire assemblies at five of the intersections around State Road 500, the need for bicycle facilities through the corridor proposed to be implemented through the combination of widening the existing sidewalk, removal of on-street parking, and widening of the turn lanes. Pedestrian ADA improvements at these intersections, rail crossings, and side streets throughout the project corridor will be needed. Uh, some drainage improvements are expected to be necessary in areas where there is widening for those bicycle lanes and keyholes. This project is also providing new sidewalk in select locations as identified in the full technical scope of work. And finally, uh, there are some intersection lighting enhancements as well. Next slide, please. All right, so the context of this project is located partially within the Orlando urban boundary. Uh, State Road 500, locally known as Orange Blossom Trail, as shown in the image is uh, Urban Principal Arterial Roadway. And this project extends through and overlaps with an ongoing redevelopment plan by the city of Orlando titled the Packing District of uh, Dr. Phillips. Coordination with the city and the upcoming and this upcoming resurfacing project will be crucial. Uh, the area is mostly industrial and commercial use uh, with many rail crossings uh, over the side streets and along State Road 500. Next slide, please. So this project uh, advertising date is scheduled for July 6th of 2021. So letters are to be based on this project's technical scope. Three firms will be selected for interviews one firm will be rewarded the 447104 project only. And uh, that concludes my portion of the presentation. Uh, thank you for the interest in the project. And uh, yeah, we look forward to reading your letters. And are there any questions for me? Um, Tyler, can I have you rejoin, please? Daniel, just hold on for a second. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Tyler, there's a question about your project. Are there parking opportunities behind the businesses that line the road? That, that's a good question. Uh, yes, I, mean, I, I think all the businesses have, um, uh, not all of them, the, along the project length, some some changes happen you know it, it uh i think for the eastern end they rely more on the street parking the on street parking and then as we get further down uh the you know like center care uh the gym uh the the businesses there have their own rather large lots that they rely on uh, so it ranges that's that's the general answer it, it ranges depending on the business. I think on the Eastern end of the project, the, the on-street parking is a little bit more valuable for the businesses because I don't think they have as much room for parking around their businesses. Okay. Does that answer the question? Sure. Um, Daniel, if I can have you join back, please. Daniel, for your project, has the TRC been identified? 
Yes, it has. Would you like me to just read them? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably okay. it. <laughs> so for the department designee will be Hada McGee. The grading TRC will be Annette Brennan, Efren Rivera, and Alex Holtkamp. All right, I think Daniel, I think you're good. Thank you, everyone. Next, we have Talib Shams. Good afternoon. My name is Talib Shams. I will be the project manager for State Road 100 resurfacing from north of Palmetto Street to Old King Road South, FPM number 445219-1. Next, please. The project is four and a half mile resurfacing in Palm Coast. Uh, this is like just the overview of the project, but we have a lot of activity in the scope, just the highlight. So the work it will be require lane and ramp closure at I-95. We are adding additional turn lane and U-turn apron and paved shoulder. And we have bicycle and pedestrian improvement and the traffic signal reconstruction and upgrade. Next, please. We estimated the design fee for this project 1.5 billion, and we expected to finish all the design in 2023. All the work, it will be done within the existing right away, and the estimated construction cost is 9 million and the letting in August 2023. Next, please. So now let's talk about the scope of work. Like we said, it is building and resurfacing. We are planning to construct paved inside shoulder to match surrounded roadway because there's uh, uh, some area it has inside shoulder, some it doesn't have. Create turn lane at Seminole Wood Boulevard and Town Center Boulevard, those brand new two turn lane. Modify existing directional medium west of Old King Road. Uh, we are adding sidewalk along the eastbound only from Palm Point to Old King Road. Uh, like I said, we have a reconstruct traffic signal, two, two of them at Billy, Terry Parkway and Memorial Medical Parkway. And the other, we have some modification. And we have some drainage improvement and side and curb ramp, ramp reconstruction. Next, please. The broader context. Uh, next, please. Uh, this, this project is the main east-west corridor through South Palm Coast, just of Penel in Flagler County. We, uh, the typical section for this project, four lane with medians or the product. And we have a lot of uh, mixed use at this corridor. We have the hospital, we have the high school, we have the airport, we have a lot of restaurant and fast food and gas station, and also the biggest issue we have the Flagler County government offices. And we noticed there's significant residential development to north of the project. Next, please. Our stakeholder, we have the city of Palm Coast, city of Penel, Flagler County, the hospital, the high school, the emergency service, the airport, and all the utility companies. Next, please. So what is the potential concern and issue? I mean, this is uh, just, I took from the scope, just uh, uh, some of them. We are impacting the existing landscape along the project. And we have concern about to maintain the access to the hospital and the school during construction. Also for the MOT, we are concerned about the closer the ramp to I-95. Also uh, with during construction, the new traffic signal and modification for the other, and the width of the sidewalk, and like I said, coordination on I-95 ramp land closure. Next, please. What our public engagement plan? We have to coordinate with all the agency and the stakeholders, like I said, 
and individual outreach to the school and the hospital and other impacted property owner. We are planning to do public information meeting for this project, and the utility coordination and the update the information on CFL roads. Next. The project it will be advertised July 19, 2021. The production day it will be May 2023 and letting day August 23rd, 2023. We are shortlist three firm and we are choosing one. The TRC, there will be Jude Francois, Laurie Epperson, and Joseph Van Tenali. And the one who do the long list, the short list, is Ashraf al Mughrabi. Next. And that's it, if anybody has a question. All right, Talib, we do have one question for you. Is okay. has escaping be a part of this contract? And would there be a tree permit needed? I don't think so. Okay. We'll just wait another minute or two for more questions. Just so everyone knows, um, you can look at Google Earth for Tyler Burgett's project, um, and you can look at the parking situations that are adjacent to the businesses. Yes, thank you. And um, on Talib's project, Casey Lyons just um, wrote in that FDOT is exempt from tree permitting. All right, and um, Talib, I think you're good. All right, next we have Elia Joseph. Okay, good afternoon again. This is a resurfacing project on a State Road 500, US 192, from west of I-95 to west of State Road 507, Babcock Street in Boulevard County. The financial project identification number is 447094-1. Uh, I am Elliot Joseph, the FDOT project manager. Next slide, please. Project overview. The project is about uh, 5.3 miles from um, west of I-95 to uh, Statewood 507 Babcock Street. And the project is in uh, Southern Boulevard County and the city of uh, Melbourne and city of West Melbourne city limits. And it is also within the uh, Palm Bay Melbourne urban boundary. This is a resurfacing project with uh, pedestrian improvements, including necessary roadside improvements. The uh, purpose of the project is to rehabilitate the uh, asphalt pavement to extend uh, the service life of the existing roadway. And the project is based on a request from uh, FDOT District 5 Pavement Management and Maintenance Office. Next slide, please. Project schedule and uh, estimated course. Design is planned uh, to begin in March 2022 and uh, complete in August 2023. The estimated design cost now is at $1.7 million. Uh, the, the project is will be with a right of way. However, there are elements, elements of work uh, such as um, uh, pedestrian curb ramps, signals that are outside of uh, the apparent FDOT right of way. So design needs will have to be coordinated with uh, a right of way and maintenance office to determine what type of agreement or if a maintenance map is needed. Letting is scheduled for October 2023. So construction is expected to start late in 2023. And the estimated construction cost is now at $11.3 million. Next slide, please. Scope of work. 
Uh, right now, SR uh, 500 is a falling divided uh, urban principal arterial with uh, two 12 foot travel lanes, uh, bike lanes, and um, uh, sidewalk in each direction. So the scope of work involves uh, milling and resurfacing all four lanes, turn lanes and crossovers. We striped to 11 foot travel lanes to provide six foot wide buffered bike lane. Extend 17 median left turn lanes to provide more vehicle storage. We construct median nose curb at uh, four locations. Uh, pedestrian improvements uh, include add and uh, or upgrade pedestrian crosswalks at signalized intersections, upgrade uh, pedestrian signals, and reconstruct ADA curb ramps. Drainage modification to also to accommodate sidewalk and curb ramp, curb ramp reconstruction. Signal improvements. There are 14 signalized intersections uh, within the limit of the project. Signal works involve signal head modification, backplate additions. Uh, we'll uh, we'll reconstruct uh, two mass arms at the I-95 northbound ramp. Replace existing span wire at five intersections. Lighting improvements. There are three uh, ongoing lighting retrofit projects within the corridor uh, with uh, uh, financial project ID number 416965-1-2-3. So intersection lighting retrofit is recommended at particular locations that are not covered by those projects and also where new uh, crossing, uh, paid crossings have been added. Next slide, please. Project context. State Road 500 in this area has a context classification C3C, which is suburban commercial, and is classified as an urban principal arterial will access classification five. State Road uh, 500 is heavily traveled and densely developed. And most of the uh, land uses uh, adjacent to, to uh, uh, SR 500 are commercial and bordered by uh, large residential uh, neighborhoods. State Road 500 is a strategic and model system connector and is also designated as an evacuation route for the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, Space Coast Area Transit Bus Route 20, 21, 25, 26 uh, serve the corridor. There is a total of uh, 14 bus stops in the corridor. We have a uh, uh, four foot bike lane on both sides uh, and sidewalk on both sides. There are also uh, lighting and uh, median decorative lighting and median landscape present in the corridor. Next slide, please. I think you, I think you skip one slide. Thank you. Key dates and reminders. Project advertising is uh, August 16, 2021. Letter of interest is due on uh, August 30th, 2021. Entry review is uh, October 5, 2021. It's not, it's not to, it's 2021. Uh, final selection is uh, October 18, 2021. Uh, Catalina Shakun will be the department designee. She will evaluate the letters of interest and uh, recommend three of them to the um, selection committee. And the letters will be returned to the, will be passed on to the TRC members who is uh, 
ID Trivet, Gabor Shurin, and Will Izido. Sorry if I mispronounce his name. Next slide, please. I think that's all I have. Any questions? Elliot, I don't see any questions at this time, but we'll just wait a minute or two just to see if anybody sends any in. All right. Elliot, I think you're good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. And next we have Efren Rivera. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Efren Rivera. Uh, I work for the District 5 drainage department, and I will be the project manager on this district-wide drainage design contract. Uh, this is the second of two drainage uh, district-wide contracts, uh, with the first one being already advertised and is going through the procurement process. So this is going to be the second of, of two. Uh, next slide. Uh, this uh, contract includes a wide variety of works and services, uh, engineering services, uh, with maybe the, the bulk of the work being uh, for plan reviews and drainage calculations. Also includes uh, uh, reviews of environmental permitting applications, general drainage design, uh, bridge hydraulics, uh, pipe video inspections, uh, and each team will have to include uh, a qualified coastal engineer. And I believe also has to be a landscape architect. It wasn't listed in here, but it will be added to, or it will be shown on the scope. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, the contract is suspected or will be advertised for one and a half million dollars. That amount will be spread over the five years uh, with, I will say, 300,000 each year. Uh, the total the duration of the contract will be five years. Uh, there will be an initial two-year contract with an optional extension of three years for a total of five. Uh, major work is 3.2. Uh, on the minor types, uh, there's a bunch of them. You can see on, on the slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the department designee uh, would be Farrell Hickson, the district drainage engineer, and the TRC members will be also from the drainage and permitting department. It will be Case Lyon, Patrick McConaughey, and Kyle Howard. Uh, next slide. Uh, the schedule is set uh, for the advertisement to be out on June 21st. Uh, theirs will be due by July the 7th. Next slide. Oops, just skip one, I think. Go back one, please. Yep. Uh, Interview should happen uh, around the August 3rd, uh, and the project is expected to be executed by fall 2021 before the actual uh, or the current contract uh, expires. Uh, and then next, uh, any question for Tyler? And I don't see any questions for you at this time, but we will hold on a minute or two just to see if there's okay. any. Maybe maybe Tyler can take more questions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll take any questions. There is a general question. Um, it says I, um, about the new department designee position. Um, is the D department designee reviewing the letters and selecting three and providing those three letters to the TRC for grading? Um, the department designee will be selecting the firms that will be shortlisted, um, and the TRC will have a chance to read all of the letters if they do, if they wish to. Um, that will be up to the um, them themselves, but the department designee will be selecting the shortlisted firms. And I think you're good to log off. 
There we go. Thank you. Um, as we did say before, um, can we go back to that one slide, Charlie? Um, with regarding marketing meetings. And as you guys can see on the, the slide that is being presented, um, that is where you are going to request marketing meetings. Um, the new process is there. All the meetings have been updated to reflect the four attendees that need to be there. Um, so it's going to be a one 30 minute meeting for the de department designee with the grading TRC. Um, so if you have any questions regarding that, um, just make sure you use the CAP plan to request those meetings. That would be appreciated. And this presentation, again, will be posted on our CAP plan in a few days, along with the attendee list and the questions and answers. If there's any question or answers that were not um, answered today, we will put those questions or those answers in the, the thing that's uploaded to the CAP plan so you guys can see those as well. Are there any other questions at this time? All right, I think we are good.